Welcome to the September 28, 2008 edition of MassapequaNews.com. I'm Christine Somer, and with me are the parents of Natalie Siapa, Doreen, and Victor. Thank you so much for coming in and speaking with us. Thank you. Natalie died on June 21st, 2008. What was the official cause of her death? Um, it was opiate-induced. Opiate-induced. Um, has the DA told you anything pertinent to this case that you would like to share? Um, the cases are not related. Um, Sigu Sung, the boy whose house she was found at, was charged with social hosting and tampering with evidence in regard to social hosting. So, um, and the Philip Ordea, her ex-boyfriend, was charged with conspiracy um, to uh, deal with drugs. If these gentlemen go to trial, will you attend the trials? Yes, definitely. Okay. Are you surprised that a contagion like heroin, traditionally an urban infection, crossed the line and spread to the mass of the suburbs? Initially I was, um, but the more I thought about it, it made sense. Um, the suburban children, middle class children, are given money, more money to go out. The parents have the money um, at their disposal. These kids, um, they, they get jobs, uh, so they have the money, and the dealers know this. They know that these are kids that go out and buy Coach Papa books. Mm -hmm. And um, so they know that if they get them addicted, they will have the funds to support it. Yes. Is it your mission that no other victim gets trapped in this evil web? Yeah. Um, we need to educate parents. So children are saved. Uh, it's just too easy to lose a child. Please. Yeah, um, we we feel that the teenagers have become our children. Um, all teenagers. All teenagers, <laughs> um, because they were all facing. The, there's no shame in a, in a child so getting involved in drugs. There's no shame in a child doing anything during their teen years because the teen years are the hardest. They're the most yeah, dangerous. Absolutely. And. Um, so we feel responsible. We can educate parents. We can somehow help. We cannot turn our back on them. Looking back, were there signs or body language that fellow parents should be looking out for in order to prevent another tragedy? Yeah, I have a list here. I'll go through as quickly as possible. Uh, your child sleeping or nodding off, say, at a restaurant. That's not natural behavior. Uh, volatile outbursts or extreme emotions. Our daughter freaked out in class. We didn't learn this until after her death. Suddenly missing class or school, switching to easier classes. Um, not hanging out with different kids, not the usual group they hung out with. Um, changing appearance, you, you have to pay attention, it's not always apparent. Um, of course, if you, try, you find drug paraphernalia, that's you know, about a pretty easy sign. Suddenly eating sweets, more than usual heroin, makes you crave sweets. You have to pay attention to that. Rappers are a dead giveaway in their room. Check their room when they're not home, very important. Uh, depression is a common use, uh, uh, sorry, a common symptom of drug use. The user comes off the drug feeling down. Being straight is not a good feeling and life seems dismal. Uh, minor problems become major issues. Uh, depression is a great excuse to get um, prescription drugs and they can sell the drugs to get heroin. Uh, scratching, heroin makes you itchy. This can occur during and after the high. Chills, girls get away with chills by saying it's PMS. Uh, and also, girls, girls get away with a lot. True. Um, <laughs> because the mood swings, yeah. the chills, um, the a lot. those symptoms. The, the nausea, symptoms. I'm nauseous, I'm always nauseous. Uh, sleeping, yeah, I'm Extra tired. Uh, PMS, uh, hormones, girls get, yeah. they can learn a lot. So um, be very mindful that these symptoms aren't getting passed off as normal. Normal teen behavior. Right, right. It's sleeping it's constantly, normal teen behavior, people say. Right. Uh, shocking comments. Drugs will make them say things they would never ever dream of saying. Uh, if you find money or valuables missing. Uh, notebooks have very important clues on them. You have to look at your children's covers, their notebooks. Thumb through them if you can. Yeah. Uh, what is it that you found on Natalie's book? I got high tonight and nobody died. And, um, it's That's just... not a joke. If you find that on your child's binder or book, take action. What right. advice would you offer other parents that may feel their children are involved in drugs? Don't waste any time. You have no time to waste. Then there's no time uh, because of the laws. Once your child turns 18, your hands will be tied. You will have virtually no recourse other than having them arrested 
um, taking them to court to have uh, to retake legal guardianship um, or serving an order of protection. And um, all of which are not quick fixes. Um, taking a shot to court can take up to a year. Yes. Because they have the right to appeal. So act fast. If your child is close to 18, get them into rehab as soon as possible. Um, even having a couple of months could be too late. Um, so. Eye contact, you have to make eye contact with the children. Very important, a lot of times they'll grow their bangs so they cover their eyes. Uh, heroin causes straying eyes like a chameleon. One eye can look straight at you, the other eye can look to the we left. We were very surprised about that. Um, I no idea. The first time we saw that, I was in the hospital mm -hmm. with her first overdose. And we were the type of parents that insisted that when she came home, we would talk to her so that we could see how she was acting. Did she look high? We would, you know, force her, just either conversation. And we were very, we were in the hospital, I thought it was damaged due to the overdose. Right. And she said, oh, that always happens to me when I take heroin. When I take heroin? Yeah. So um, she was readily admitting she was in the hospital. In the hospital, the, hospital day, the first overdose that we found okay. out was heroin. So okay. at that point, a lot of the facts came out that we hadn't realized. So right now, current law dictates that the age of 18 is the age of maturity. Exactly. And you lose all control over yes. whether or not your child can get into rehab. Will you work towards amending laws in Nat on Natalie's behalf? Yes, yes we're, we're, we're presently DA. working with, the Nassau, with County the DA. Nassau County DA, and um, we'd like anybody who can get together petition lists to regain parental rights, um, especially in regard to drug abuse. Once your child turns 18, you have no recourse, and yet you cannot stop your child from going on drugs, from, you cannot get them off of drugs. But until they're 21, if they get behind a car, uh, mm -hmm. get in a car and um, drive and, and hurt someone, hurt someone, you kill someone, responsible. Responsible. you are responsible. You will lose your house, and the law says that it's your fault. But you have no. Recourse. It's a common sense thing. We need people. Yes. If you could look into the living rooms and reach into the offices of every MassPeopleNews.com audience member, what would you say to them? What I would say is addiction has no true face. Natalie was uh, an honor society child, um, a cheerleader for years, and she was involved in all county chorus, women's choir, for uh, four years of high school. This was not the typical kid you would assume would deal with any drug, especially heroin. You have to confront your children, you have to be involved in their lives because it's too easy to be fooled. And there is no per se drug look on a kid, it could be anybody's kid. It could be everybody's if kid. If you look, if you look at the picture um, that we gave of Natalie, it was taken nine days. nine days before she died. She was beautiful, healthy. No one looking at her would could even Suspect. consider for a moment that she was uh, addicted to heroin, because they see the sunken sheets. Yeah. That's what concerns us: is that if you go online, um, a lot of times when you go to uh, hearings or panels, they show the faces. Of addiction and there. It's confusing. It because is. Because the stereotypical look of an addict is not the real addicts. Yes, and, and get your child tested. You have one great ally, it is your pediatrician. You you can go. It, your child's as simple as a urine test. It's absolutely a simple urine test taken during their uh, yearly exam. If you suspect drug abuse, tell your child they have an exam. Most kids won't even ask why. Right. You had a checkup due. Yes. And call the doctor and say, during this checkup, I want the urine test. Okay. And that's a very important fact. Many kids feel because they're snorting heroin, there cannot be an addiction. And that right. couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, let your kids know that. No one is injecting heroin anymore. They're all snorting. And it is the choice. It is the drug of choice among white middle class children. We've spoken to addicts. They said the first time you snort, right. you're you right it. So don't even try it. No, it's the most powerful it's ever been. And the cheapest it's ever been. This? Seven dollars a day. Doreen, thank you very much for telling your story and that of Natalie's. This couldn't have been easy. No. Let's close with a photo of Natalie taken nine days before her death. 